G'day viewers, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to Life Off-Road. Now, if you're just joining us, we are partway through an amazing adventure. We've joined Daryl Beatty, a motorcycle crew, and we've got two Iveco trucks along for an incredible off-road adventure. It's going to be another fantastic day on the tracks, so come along for the fun. Waking up bright and early, the motorbike riders tuck into breakfast, provided by hosts Daryl Beatty and Scott Scooter McLean, before jumping back on their bikes to continue their adventure. They're being supported by the Iveco Euro Cargo, driven by Scooter, and the Daily 4x4, driven by me. Today we'll be facing around 230 kilometres of the infamous Simpson Desert. A crucial part of Daryl Beatty Adventures, Scooter not only drives the Euro cargo truck, but also provides mechanical assistance for the motorbike riders and is in constant communication with them in case of emergencies. Copy, Scooter. Yeah, got you, Tony. Yeah, what's your job on these trips? Oh, we sort of obviously driving the truck is, is the main part, but you know, I help Daryl with the cooking, the cleaning, the help all customers set up their beds and pack them up and just keep a good eye on the truck underneath and around it and generally everything, mate, yeah. And how's the Euro Cargo handle the off-road conditions? Yeah, no, it's really good. Got plenty of torque down low and some reasonable suspension under it and uh, having the air CTI tyre inflation system is, is it's actually the one of the best things we've got going on this truck because with our old truck we used to have to stop and let the tyres down and pump them up and we just save so much time being able to do that on the fly, you know. Along the way, the two Ivecos made a stop at a unique landmark, the Lone Gum. This tree stands defiantly in an extremely arid landscape. No one knows how or why it's there, but it's a great place for a quick break before heading back to the French line and on towards the salt flats of the Simpson Desert. As support vehicles, it had been a late start for the two Iveco trucks. We were pushing hard, but as expected, the French line made for tough going. 
the dunes were getting noticeably bigger and the sand drier and softer. It took some time and work, but eventually we caught up with Daryl and the motorbikes just in time to supply them with a well-earned lunch. This was also the spot for another important task. We'd been asked to provide some fuel for a friend of Daryl's who would be making a solo crossing of the Simpson Desert in a few weeks time as part of a record breaking attempt. Our team buried the petrol in an identifiable spot, taking photos and recording GPS coordinates. The record attempt would see a lone bike rider attempting a double sprint crossing of the Simpson a formidable task in any vehicle. With lunch and our fuel deposit done, it was time again to head further eastward. The riders and the two Ivecos continued along the French line in search of the final camping spot for the trip. I found the dunes on this run are a lot more hard packed, a bit easier to get up and down. What's the big challenge for the motorbikes in crossing the Simpson Desert? Well, you know, a lot of the guys aren't used to the sand, but I think it's just the fact that it's so long, you know. To do it unsupported is a, is a pretty big challenge for bike riders because they've got to carry so much fuel and water and food and stuff, so that's why a lot of the guys come with us because they realise that, you know. With the light slipping swiftly away for the day, we made our way to the iconic Popel's Corner for a compulsory visit. Marking the intersection of the borders of the Northern Territory, South Australia and Queensland, this spot is one of the most famous landmarks within the Simpson Desert. After taking a few happy snaps, we again headed off to rendezvous with Daryl Beatty and the rest of the convoy at the evening's camp spot. Throughout this trip, the crew and convoy have been supported by the Aveco Euro Cargo, the official vehicle for Daryl Beatty adventures. From refueling the bikes to feeding the humans, this precisely set up machine has effortlessly proved its worth as a capable super tourer and mothership. For more information on this formidable vehicle, we talked to Joel Reed from Iveco. Good morning everyone, here we are, day four. We've all had a bit of a sleep in. I think we had a bit of a late night and we solved a few problems around the campfire. Yeah, so, um... 
So this is the mighty Eurocargo ML150 E28. So it's a 15 ton truck, constant 4x4. It's powered by a Tektor 6 litre engine, producing 280 horsepower and 950 newton metres of torque. Again, the Iveco range has a very, very flat torque curve. So Scooter constantly makes comments about how the flat torque curve helps him in this driving situation throughout the sand. You can be low on the revs, you don't need to change gears on any of the sand dunes, and it has enough grunt to get you up and over. To aid in the sand driving, the vehicle has a low range transfer box, six speed manual transmission, and it's got three diff locks, center diff lock, rear diff lock, and front diff lock. So nominally speaking, they're in third gear low range with the center and rear diff lock in, and for some of the steep and tricky and really sandy climbs, they may have to engage the front diff lock. So we've configured the vehicle with the standard option, which is the big 395 balloon tyres. These tyres track in the front and rear wheel the same, so singles on the rear. And what we have fitted is a central tyre inflation kit, an air CTI kit. As you can see, the vehicle is configured with four big Nava LED driving lights and a light bar up on the roof. We've also configured the vehicle with two 300 litre diesel fuel tanks, one on each side, and they're tucked up high on the chassis rail so there's no issue with ramp over angle. There's also a, an unleaded fuel tank on the very rear of the vehicle with a 12 volt pump to refuel the motorcycles throughout the journey. The body is configured by a company called Unidan. It's done a fantastic job. It supports 11, 12 people with all the camping equipment, 1,000 litres of drinking water, 400 litres of shower water, four big Waco 110 litre fridges, so it's a home away from home. Here we are, last day, we've got 100 kilometres to go until the infamous Big Red Sand Dune. So there's a lot of discussions around the campfire last night of how we're all going to tackle Big Red from the motorcycle perspective of what they'll do, daily 4x4, what their strategy will be, and even for this big girl, we'll see how we go and have an attempt to get up Big Red. There are over 1,100 sand dunes in the Simpson Desert, and if you're travelling west to east like we are, the most formidable of these is the very last one, Big Red. At over 40 metres in height, this iconic sand dune is a challenge for even the best equipped vehicles.
Luckily for us, with a bit of air out of the tyres, the Iveco Daily 4x4 and Euro Cargo both can easily make their way up the steep ascent. Waiting for us at the top was Daryl Beatty and the motorbike riders, having just completed their adventure across the Simpson Desert and enjoying one last play on the sand. Of course it's best to be prepared on trips like this, that's why we brought along a set of Tread Pro traction boards. And whilst the Aveco Daily 4x4 did make it up without issue, we did decide to test just how well these traction boards would work in such conditions. Hi everyone, we've conquered another Simpson Desert Crossing and they're always different every year we arrive out here and do east and west runs across the desert. We've had a great time with a great crew this trip on the motorcycles with Darrell Biddy Adventures. The desert's in pretty good condition, not too busy this time of year and the flies are at a minimum which has been absolutely fantastic with this cooler weather. If you're interested in Darrell Biddy Adventures, jump on our website darrellbeattadventures.com.au Come to the Simpson Desert, the Canning Stock Group, or Cape York. We've had a ball out here, 1100 dunes, and another 40 k's from Big Red here, and we'll be at the Birdsville Pub. Now that we've completed our arduous journey across one of the world's most famous deserts, the motorbike riders and the two Ivecos head off to nearby Birdsville to celebrate and reflect on what was an amazing adventure. It had certainly been an experience and an achievement. Spending time with MotoGP legend Daryl Beatty, conquering the Simpson Desert, and spending time with such adventurers on what was nothing short of a once in a lifetime experience. We've successfully dragged seven motorcycles and two Iveco trucks right across the Simpson Desert. Unfortunately, the trip is over, but I hope you enjoyed the adventure. I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard, there's more of Life Off-Road coming your way next week.